Good morning, everybody. Rise and shine here with Charlotte and Ken at Mountaintop Ministries. And uh, it's coming daylight, and uh, we're surrounded by new life this morning. And I heard this rattling in the middle of the night, and uh, we got a little incubator set up right here in the corner of uh, one of our rooms in the house. And uh, so, first of all, let's just make a swing here. I'm just surrounded with new life. I want to sit right here. Go ahead, honey, and just talk while you're Oh, moving. my hibiscus? Is that what you want to see? Yeah. All right. And, and uh, this is called a flamingo plant that I desperately need to get transplanted. And I don't know why it's called that, but it has these red blooms. My niece gave me that a couple years ago. It's beautiful. Um, I still have a Christmas cactus, which is, a, <laughs> I mean, a... A poinsettia, which is totally amazing. My Christmas cactus just finished blooming. And we're going to have flowers here in a couple days. Yeah, surrounded by and new life. Take a look <laughs> in there. Uh, I think maybe we need to get some of these out. They're moving to the barn today. They just started hatching yesterday. Where is the, where is the flashlight? It's right there on the hutch, Ken. I don't know if you can see them, but when you come to the edge, they're just all right here wanting out. <laughs> oh, they're busy little things, aren't they? Uh-huh. I think there's eight. Do, do you know that people ask me all kinds of questions, but you know, these eggs, when we put them in here, 21 days, is the incubation time. And it's an amazing thing to me. It's got to be a God thing, a creative thing for sure. Exactly 21 days, here they come out of that shell. Yeah, they, and what, and, they started yesterday. Yep, yeah, and what they, have, what they have in that shell to eat will last them for three days. In other words, I've bought, I bought birds and stuff from California already, or all kinds of places. And they've had enough in that shell to last them for three days without a bite of food mm -hmm. or a drink there, of water. See, that one's eating out of the shell right now. Isn't that cute? Well, let's go over here to the lesson. Thanks, Sherry. All right, Ken. <laughs> I guess I ought to thank you for letting that happen in the house. Yeah, and, and you did say they're going to the barn today, right? Today. Thank you. Today. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm good. <laughs> People are asking me um, questions concerning the church. How is the church? Is the church doing okay in relationship to the uh, COVID situation and uh, restrictions and that type of thing? And I would like to say that the church is what you want it to be. It really is. Uh, the church is vital. It's needed. Uh, this is the day when uh, the Lord wants to use the church in a mighty way. He really does. I have a feeling like we are heading for days when the church will have to be something a little more than what it has been as far as uh, what we do and how we do it and go about it. But uh, God help us to... Uh, uh, be the church, let the church be the church. And I read this by Charles Spurgeon this morning in the early hours, and I wrote it down, and I wanna give it to you this morning, what the church is. Oh, I didn't tell you, Our, the church is doing fine. It's doing fine, we are so excited. Uh, we, uh, we're just praising God for what's happening. Uh, new people coming in, people getting, getting saved and giving your heart to the Lord and getting baptized and I want to make one thing really clear. That's a God thing. That's not a Ken Reed thing. That's not a Ron Parr thing. That's a God thing. I'm so excited. I give him all the honor. The second that we would take any glory for that, mm -hmm. it's a God thing. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus and Nazarene. And that wouldn't happen either without uh, hearts that are willing to follow the Lord. Yeah. And we just have such amazing people. We do. Uh, 
they they're hungry to be all that God wants them to be. Amen. And, and yep. that makes a difference. It really does. We could have the church doors open, and if they didn't come, that's right. It, it that would, is right. Wouldn't work. Yeah. We're offering services on the inside of the church, and we're broadcasting to the parking lot, and uh, all kind of ways to reach the people. But uh, if you're out there and and you don't have a church, uh, I, we invite you. Give you a warm invitation to come to Mountaintop Ministries. Now let's get to my little thought here. Okay. Jesus said, "Upon this rock I will build my church." and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Upon this rock, Jesus, maybe you think that means Peter because Jesus gave Peter the nickname of the rock. And uh, uh, the, the church is not built on Peter. Oh, Peter was a vital part of the church. Uh, the church is built on Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand Okay, the church, here it is, what I wrote, what I read and wrote down. The church is not an institution for perfect people. It's a sanctuary for sinners that are saved by grace. Our goal is to be as perfect as we possibly can be, perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect, that's scripture. To always be ringing the bell that we're not perfect but almost give the implication that we're not trying to be perfect. Our, our every effort ought to be to be as holy and righteous as we and obedient to Christ as we possibly can. Now that just doesn't happen overnight. It really does. Uh, it takes a little time and working at growth. Okay, but it's a sanctuary for sinners saved by grace. Uh, the danger is for us to, in the church to become pious a little bit and think. Like, uh, well, we've been Christians for so long. Uh, yeah, we're still sinners saved by grace. We're still sinners saved by grace, okay? We're, we're, we're not sinners per se. We are Christians, but we're sinners that have been saved by grace. And we're still dealing with the element of the, of the old nature, the element of down here in this world, we're still mortal going through. And uh, anyway, uh, it's a sanctuary for that group of people to get together and say, I need Jesus more than anything I have ever needed. I need Jesus. The church is a nursery for God's sweet children. Really important to realize that we are growing together. We are the children of God and we are growing together. Need to care for each other, nurture each other, strengthen each other, encourage each other, spiritually disciple each other. If you're out there listening and you're one of the ones that have recently just got saved, reach out to us, please re reach out to us. Uh, you, you, you need to be nurtured, but you need to show the commitment. I'm begging you, reach out to us. Phone call, text us. We want to, you know, even if you do it every day, we want to have prayer with you. We want to counsel with you. We want to advise you. We want to help you grow in the Lord. You've got to bring something to the table. And the something is your desire to reach out for help because we want to nurture you, okay? Um it's, so it's a nursery for God's sweet children. It's also uh, a place where babies can be nurtured and made strong. It's, I like that. These little chicks here are pretty vibrant right now. They just got, they just got born. They're pretty vibrant. Uh, but they're trying to get out of there because they'd like uh, some water and they'd like some feed, some chick feed. And so that'll happen very quickly here as soon as I'm done Talking to you, precious people, I'll be taking care of that business, okay? The church is a fold for God's sheep. That This concept is so relevant, it's in the Bible all over. The concept of the shepherd and the sheep. Jesus said, the shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. 
Uh, he gives the parable of the shepherd laying across the fold, uh, you know, the entrance to the fold and the sheep are on the inside and the shepherd would uh, lay down his life there for this. He says, uh, the sheep know my voice. Uh, you know, and the church becomes a place where new Christians and older Christians can experience and learn to discern the difference between God's voice and, uh, you know, other voices that we are hearing. And there's a big difference, okay? Uh, and even when one of the sheep go astray, Jesus said, uh, the good shepherd goes out into the night that one sheep, that one lamb, and finds it on the hillside, brings it back, and gets it back with the with the group. And uh, that's what the church is about. That's what the church is about. You know, it's a fold for God's sheep. It's a home for the Christian family. And, that, you know, the word home has a very beautiful ring to it, especially in our day and age today. Uh, homes are under a lot of attack and under a lot of stress, and, you know, uh, broken apart a lot of times. But, you know, the church becomes a home. Uh, a gentleman, um, a few weeks ago, a number of weeks ago, I would say five or six, came to Mount Dot Ministries, got baptized. Sunday morning when he was leaving, he said to me, he leaned over and he said, I have found a home. <laughs> I have found a home. That's what the church is supposed to be. You know, that's what the church is supposed to be for the Christian family. The church is supposed to be the dearest place on the face of God's earth. Many, many times churches turn into places where feelings get in the way, people say things. Um, sometimes personalities get in the way and sometimes leadership gets in the way. It, you put a group of people together, you can have some stress. But the church is supposed to be the dearest place on the earth. That's why churches need to eliminate every possibility they can where division could erupt and, and just concentrate on loving each other Loving God and loving each other. That's what the church is supposed to be. We need, we need more, less committees and more, more Christ. We, we need less board meetings and more dearly beloveds. Uh, Charles Spurgeon wrote that, and uh, I just think it's a powerful uh, lesson for us this morning. If you have a church... If you're saved and born again, you are part of Christ's family and the church at large. But you will not be you will not be at your best, I don't believe, as a lone ranger. You will need a church family. And I pray for all the other churches in our community. Pray that God will bless them. Make them vibrant. Help them to be, be, be seeing people get saved and come to Christ. And right here in our community, you know, I pray for them, that, that, that God would bless them and sustain them and strengthen them and give their pastors leadership skills and anoint them with the Holy Spirit. And somehow when people drive by their facility that they will, they will see uh, and feel the presence of Almighty God. So uh, God bless you today to all of my church family. Uh, it extends out of quite a ways. It really does. Uh, because people tell me as a result of the COVID, they communicate with me. They're locked down in a lot of places and they, they are not having churches in a lot of places. They said, we want to be a part of your, of your church. And, and that's okay with me. That is just a delightful situation. But as soon as you can get back into your real church, your own home church, you need to do that as soon as you possibly can so you can experience the family and the anointing and have a pastor to care for you and pray for you. Anyway, God bless you to all my church, mountaintop family church uh, uh, people. Um, we love you. We bless you. We encourage you. And uh, we're here for you. 
And uh, we just ask that you would take, bring, bring your part to the table. That's accountability. Uh, that's, a, that, that's keeping the link there. That's, you, you know, how long would it, I'm getting to preaching here now. How long, how long would it go before you would take the initiative and call the pastors, you know, and say, you know, I, I want to be a little closer here, even if I'm not coming to church. Uh, it's a concern of mine that you would miss the church so much that you would take the initiative. Many times we we hear, uh, we should have called us. I wish you'd call us. Uh, so we know we want to be, we want to be what we're supposed to be for you. We need your help. Call us, text us. We're praying for you. We love you. Let the church be the church. On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The words of Jesus. Have a great day. Remember, you're part of the church family. We love you, and God bless you.